tomorrow I am super excited I'm going to the island of Flourish from what I researched and from what I heard Flourish is supposed to be like a next level uh, wonder of nature so I'm super excited and I hope the weather is going to be good and I hope I will enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the previous three islands I'll see you there peace Looks like the sun is out. Let's see what Flourish has to offer. Being far removed from the rest of the islands of the Azorian archipelago, Flores has always been isolated from the outside world. For centuries it was completely secluded, with only rare visits of cargo ships loading up on fresh water from here. Flores is the westernmost point of the Azores and just like other islands has volcanic origins. It is only 17 kilometers long and 12 kilometers wide, with a population of just under 4,000 people. Because of its isolation, Flourish is one of the last Azorian islands to get developed and open up for tourism. As of 2009, the island is officially proclaimed as UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, classification that is given to a region to remain untouched when it comes to vegetation, flora and fauna. Despite its small size, Flores has a lot to offer, from ancient Laura Silva forests to seaside cliffs and beautiful waterfalls. But before we dive into good stuff, let's stop for a second and talk about a couple of negative observations. I came across this beautiful scenery, put up my drone, um, beautiful, beautiful weather, no clouds, sunshine, no indication of anything bad to happen. Matter of seconds, this cloud comes out of nowhere, it starts pouring rain, the whole area just got so foggy, um, I barely got my drone back, it was just so bad. I guess that's the perks of being uh, located in the middle of Atlantic. And if weather changes is something out of human control, cutting down trees at this beautiful place should never happen. I came across a few small areas where I saw this happening, and I truly hope there is some reasonable explanation for it. When I was on the plane coming here, I kept thinking about picturesque images of this island I saw on the internet. My first goal was to find a spot from which I could experience it myself. And so I headed straight from the airport towards the west coast of the island for my official introduction to Flourish. And what an introduction that was.
inland of the island is populated with numerous calderas. These are old volcano craters that over time turn into lakes. There are at least 7 famous lakes that can be found here. I have chosen to see 4 of them. Located between lush laurel forests and green hills filled with flowers, it makes the drive around here very special. First on the menu were Lagoa Funda or Deep Lake and Lagoa Rasa or Flat Lake at 22 and 16 meters deep respectively. In a close proximity from here you can find the other two lakes. These are Lagoa Comprida, which means Lone Lake, and Lagoa Negra, which means Dark Lake. They are at 17 and 108 meters deep respectively. What's interesting is that Darker Lake is actually Lagoa Comprida, which creates a little bit of confusion. Here you can find a viewpoint with spectacular sight of both lakes in the palm of your hand. After getting familiar with some of the island's nature, I had to explore the life of its inhabitants. A perfect way to start is to learn about the history of Flourish First Settlements. A place that provides this opportunity is located in the western part of the island and is a part of Fajan Granju Parish. Set up in 17th century and inhabited in early 18th century, Aldea da Quada is one of the first settlements on the island. I honestly feel like I went back in time. This village is incredible. Everything is original. Everything made of rock, the volcanic rock. Um, just shows how people, the first settlers, how they used to live. And behind this village, huge, huge mountains with a nice waterfall. Incredible. Up until 1960s, the village was still inhabited, but during one of the largest waves of immigration from the Azores to North America, Quada's last inhabitants left and the village was abandoned. Thankfully, recently it was fixed and turned into an ambitious project, serving as a lodge complex where anyone can stay for a few days, establishing a link between past and present. Pretty cool experience if you ask me. After learning about the past, I've decided to get a glimpse at the present, and so I've headed to a nearby village of Fajazinha. As I expected, Fajazinha turned out to be a lovely little place hidden among high cliffs and waterfalls. Established in late 17th century, it is a tiny village full with white houses and green fields. Fajazinha is home to only 70 people, although during my visit, it felt like population of this place was zero. Well, except for this gentleman and a cat. I think I found my retirement place. I mean, what a lovely place. It feels like I'm the only tourist here. I can literally hear the nature. It's like the whole city is dead. I don't know where the locals are right now, but this feels incredible. The moral of the story is that living on Flourish means embracing a calm and quiet world, far away from the chaos of the outside world. Going to this island, I obviously did my research and I've seen pictures on the internet and they look great. But the island definitely over-delivered. Um, I am honestly blown away. To have so much greenery in one place, I never thought it would be possible. This is such a peaceful place. I would definitely, definitely come back here in a heartbeat. I'm honestly blown away. It is worth mentioning that driving through Flourish is one of the best experiences you can have here. I mean, it is the case for the other islands too, but whereas on the other islands it is applicable to only some of its parts, on Flourish the unmatched beauty is everywhere. This is the case where you don't have to look for beautiful sights or attractions, they just come to you. An example is 
Hosha dos Bordeaux, geological phenomena made up of huge columns of basalt thousands of years ago. Imagine making the next turn during a drive and being surprised by this masterpiece created by nature. If I were to recommend something, definitely rent the car and explore the island. Um, I never seen anything like this. Maybe it comes close to Maui um, in Hawaii, but this is different. This is like a whole other level. If you're looking to just get away and relax uh, in isolation, this is the place to go to. Speaking of driving, Flores means flowers, the name given to this island for a reason. Millions of beautiful flowers are spread out across the island. And my favorite were hydrangeas. These were scattered by the roads and driving through these flower corridors was unforgettable experience. At some point I've realized that I spent close to two weeks in the Atlantic and haven't gone into the water yet. So I headed towards the westernmost point village of the Azores. Fajan Granju, with the hope to find a place to swim. One of the negatives of the Azores, as I mentioned in my first episode of this series, was lack of nice beaches, and Flores was not an exception. Dark volcanic rocks and man-made diving boards is as good as it gets here. However, locals are not really bothered by this, as the Atlantic waters around here are spectacular and that's all that matters. I couldn't convince myself to take a dip and instead headed for a cup of coffee to a nearby cafe. That's where I met a nice local lady who recommended a natural pool created by waterfalls at the base of volcanic crater. You can swim in uh, Shinish. You, you see? You saw the, the pool? Uh, it's um, like uh, rocks too, but mm -hmm. much people go there and swim there too. Now, this was a game changer and I was determined to find it to fulfill my goal of taking a swim. Surprisingly, on the way here I missed it, as it's right before entering the village. A short walk from the main road and there it was, a beautiful Cascata do Poço do Bacalhau. My time in Flores and the Azores was coming to its end. I wanted to find a peaceful place where I could just relax and reflect on my journey through these beautiful islands. I heard about these waterfalls located in the middle of the forest and I headed towards the middle of the island to find them. After about 25 minute hike through the forest, I reached the base of the beautiful hill with a stunning lagoon formed by the waterfalls. And what I saw next took my breath away.
this island just keeps impressing. Just as I think I've seen everything, you have stuff like those waterfalls and they are incredible, incredible. You can't, I wish the camera could transform the, the beauty of it and the whole like, magnitude of it, but wow. I have chosen Poço Ribeira do Ferreiro as my last stop for a reason, as this is exactly how I wanted to remember the Azores, a place of extreme natural beauty and complete tranquility. To sum up my experience in the Azores, I shall do it with the words of famous Portuguese poet José Antonio Camões. If biblical paradise existed by the sea, we could think that this corner of the world was part of it. During my stay in the Azores, I visited four islands and I can assure you that every single island that I went to is worth visiting. I brought new experiences, new emotions and new feelings from every place that I went to. I would like to thank the Azores and its people for being there, for providing the opportunity for the guys like me to come in and disconnect from the reality and enjoy these beautiful views, enjoy these creations of nature and fully recharged batteries. But remember, no matter what I tell you and no matter how many videos you see and no matter how many stories you hear, it is always better to see it once than hear about it hundreds of times. And so I encourage you, when you get an opportunity, come in and see it yourself. I promise you, you won't regret it. Stay adventurous, stay safe, stay loved. Until next time.